Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I've been wanting to get a hold of one of these Mr. Heater Buddy Flex systems for a while. I finally got a hold of the heating element in addition to the side cooking element that you see here on your screen. So today I'm going to go ahead and unpack these. I'm going to go ahead and let you know what these guys are all about. And we're going to go ahead and test it and even maybe cook some eggs on the cooker because it's breakfast time here. And it's about time for breakfast. Now, as far as the heater flex goes, I wanted to go over some specifications for you. As you can see here, right on the box, it says that it's safe for indoor use. However, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you read the instructions. I do believe that as long as you have nine square inches of outside air coming into your room, it is safe to use. However, this unit also comes with an oxygen sensor that will allow it to automatically turn off if it detects that the oxygen level in the room is getting low. Another thing that I like about this unit is that it has a knockover sensor, just like the Big Buddy or the regular Buddy system, where if you knock it over, it will shut down, and we will test that on this video. It says that it has omnidirectional 180 degree heat, which means that instead of the heat going straight forward, you're gonna have 180 degree of coverage as far as the heat that's being distributed from the unit. It's wind resistant. It has, it has a quick connect for the gas to the appliance that we're going to be reviewing as well, which is nice. And it has an output of between 8,000 and 11,000 BTU. So we'll go over the output of the BTU when we review it as well. So let me show you what this comes with when you unpack it. This is the Buddy Flex. As you can see, what they meant by 180 degree radius is that the heating element comes all the way from this edge to the other edge, giving you 180 degree disbursement of heat. The old buddies used to only have a forward heating element, meaning that the heating elements that were placed in it, which were ceramic or are ceramic, would only project heat forward. It also came with an instruction manual that brings a AAA battery. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've read this instruction manual. It's very important that you read this. Now, in the instruction manual, it says that it is safe for you to use this indoors. However, they have stipulations on what you can and should not do. So make sure that you read it. This is not my first go-to, and I would not recommend something like this as your first go-to in an emergency. This is really a backup to my backup to my backup to my backup, all right? But I wanted to go ahead and get this and review it for you guys because I think it's a very nice little system. So far, just from looking at it, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and see how it radiates heat and how hot it actually gets when it radiates heat, all right? So as you can see, this is the front, this is the side, and it has a compartment where you have a quick connect that can connect to your appliance, to your cooker, and it also has another compartment where you can go ahead and put in your battery. So you can put in your battery here. And on this part of the compartment, it looks like you can put spare batteries in there as well. The back of the unit has your working knob. It has your igniter. And it also has the regulator that accepts your one pound propane tank. The working knob up here has two sides. One of them is for the heating unit, and one of them is for your accessory, your cooktop unit. The other side has a compartment for whatever you want to put in there or whatever you can fit in there. I would assume that this compartment would probably be good to put a hose. For example, when we open up the cooker element, that's going to have a hose that connects to this unit. That's probably what this was made for, but we'll find out here. In a minute or it's got a nice little handle up here that makes it pretty convenient to carry it's not very heavy if i had to say it probably weighs about 15 pounds or so now as i stated before this is something that i would use in a last case scenario where i've lost all of the ability to heat my home and only have this left where you can at least heat one room and you and your family can stay warm but i cannot stress enough ladies and gentlemen i cannot stress enough Make sure that you read the owner's manual and that you understand everything before you decide to use this. What we're going to do now is, is 
I'm going to go ahead and put the battery in this. I'm going to go ahead and attach the propane canister. I have a one pound propane canister. Attach it and we'll see how it works. Okay, so I found something that I don't like. I put my canister on, my propane canister on, and I realize that the front of the unit is on the opposite side as the starting instrumentation, which kind of makes it difficult because when you want to see the pilot light, you have to actually either get to know this area pretty well, which is not difficult to do, just by feel, so that you can see if the pilot light is turning on or not. Now, I did purge the line to make sure that there's propane in it. I was able to smell it on the other side. So our line is purged of air and is full of propane. However, you're going to have to remember what you're doing back here if you want to be able to keep an eye on the front to see if your light is actually lit. So the way that you turn this on is, is you take this knob, you bring it to where it says ignition pilot. And as you're pressing down on the knob while it's on the ignition pilot position, you have to press down on the ignite button as well until your pilot light turns on. Once your pilot light turns on, you continue to press down on this for about 30 seconds. Then you can lift it up and your pilot light will be on. After which you can go ahead and control your knob or adjust it to wherever you want it, to low or high or in between. So let's go ahead and turn this around. I'm going to go ahead and do what I just explained for, to you to do. It's very simple. Even if you don't know how to do it, it's got instructions right here. All right. So let's go ahead and turn it around and see if we can turn it on successfully. All right. So hopefully you guys have a good view of the element that's going to heat on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my knob to the pilot setting. I've got to turn to the pilot setting now at the same time that we turn it on, that we push down on the knob, we're going to go ahead and push on the ignition button. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can hear the gas coming out and the pilot, I can see the pilot lighting. Now I'm going to lay off of the pilot button and hopefully you can see that the pilot is lit. So I am still pressing down on the control knob that's on the pilot setting to make sure that the gas is flowing in there well enough for about 30 seconds or so. And then I'm going to let go of that knob and then prepare to adjust it so that the element can turn on. And there you go. I just let go of the knob. So now you can see the pilot right there is still lit. So now all you have to do is press down on the knob just a little bit. And you're going to go ahead and be able to light up this entire element. And right now I'm putting it on low. As you can see, it's light up, lighting up on low. So that right there is just a little bit higher than low. This is medium and I can feel the heat coming off of it. It's very nice actually. And here we have it on high. So right here we're drawing 11,000 BTU. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just to give you an idea of how long that one pound propane canister will last operating at 11,000 BTU, one pound of propane has just shy of 22,000 BTU, which means that that one pound canister of propane will power this on high for a couple of hours. So this is definitely something that I would use for an emergency. So, so far, this is generating a really nice amount of heat. I mean, I'm standing about four feet away from it, and I can feel the heat coming this way. One of the things that I like about this is that if you knock it over, that it will turn off. But also, you have to remember to read the instructions in the owner's manual, because there are some places where you do not want to place this. For example... You don't want to put this on the floor if you have a carpeted floor, okay? Even though it has a knock over shut off, I would not want to put this on the floor on a carpeted floor. Another thing to remember is that whenever you are using this, act like this is a candle. 
make sure that if you are using this in a room in your home, that you do not leave it unattended for any reason whatsoever. And always, ladies and gentlemen, public safety announcement, keep a fire extinguisher handy at all times. So now what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to go ahead and unpack the burner, the cooker, and see how it works. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what the cooker appliance looks like that hooks up to the Buddy Flex. It comes with the appliance itself and an owner's manual and also a AAA battery that I already took out. All right Now, I'm kind of disappointed in this where the box on the Buddy Flex says that it can be used indoors. This, this specifically states on this card that you do not want to cook indoors with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our battery in real quick. And anyways, this is what it looks like. So you can see it's got a knob just like the Buddy Flex does. And it's got a nice radiant cooking top on it. So we're going to go ahead and move this off so we can turn it around. I'll show you guys what it looks like on the other side. And here is our hose that we take out to attach it to the flex. And as you can see, the hose has a way to get out without being crimped. So that's how that would go. Our battery goes in this little compartment right here. You'll need a screwdriver in order to remove it. So we'll take that out. It's as easy as just putting your battery in there. I would recommend that if you're going to have something like this in storage, like for example, when I'm done with this, I'm going to put it back in the box and I'm going to put it away in my trailer and keep it there in case I need to break glass in case of emergency. I would recommend that you take the batteries out of the units. That way they don't corrode. It's got some nice little sturdy legs. I kind of like the legs that it's got on there. We're going to go ahead and put this around. And then we're going to go ahead and switch our big buddy to this side since the hose comes out of this side. I did forget to show you guys the knockdown on the flex. So before we're done with this video, I am going to turn it back on, knock it over to see if it shuts off. Okay, so stand by. The buddy flex has the quick connect. All you need to do is take this hose and connect it to the buddy flex. So now all we have to do is we have to turn this knob. To the low position right there press in and then hit our pilot sparker right here to turn it on let's see how it works if it works quickly or not so we're pressing in and there you can see i hope you guys can see that the pilot turned on so now i'm going to go ahead and hold this knob down for about 30 seconds or so just to make sure that that thermocouple is hot enough to tell the system that it has a flame. I believe it's a thermocouple or the thermopile. It's, it's one of those two names that lets the system know that, yes, it's hot enough to detect a flame running. And what happens is, is if it is not hot enough, it will automatically shut down your flame or automatically shut down your gas feed. That way you're not just having gas going into Okay, the I've been holding it for about a good 30 seconds, 45 seconds now. Let's see if it'll stay on. And there we go. So that right there is on high. I think it's going to work out pretty good because that is generating a good amount of heat. However, ladies and gentlemen, I'll say again that the instructions say that you should not be using that burner indoors. Not sure exactly why. When you can use propane indoors like I do on my range, but that is what the owner's manual states. I decided to just heat up some water instead for my coffee because if I bring eggs in here and fry it, it might get grease and stuff all over my clean table and I don't want to do that. So right now it's 8.30 almost to the second. There's about a cup and a half of water in here. Let's go ahead and place that up there and I'm going to show you guys. The watch again, once that comes to a boil. Well, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it is come to a boil. And it is 8.35. So it took roughly just shy of five minutes for it to come to a boil. Because 
it was already doing this before I turned the camera back on. So let me go ahead and turn this off and then we'll wrap it up and I'll tell you what I so think. The about unit this is on system. high. Now we're going to go ahead and knock this thing over to see if it turns off. I'm just going to pull it towards me this way. And as you can see, it worked. It turned off as soon as it detected that it was a certain number of degrees off to the side and it turned off. I really like that safety function on this unit and the big buddy and little buddy as well. So what do I think about this unit, ladies and gentlemen? Let me go ahead and break them down one by one. The Buddy Flex, I think it's a nice unit. However, I have a couple of problems with this. One of the problems is the price. It's priced at about $160 or so, give or take, depending where you get it, right? And what you have to pay for shipping and all that kind of stuff. You can get a Big Buddy unit that doesn't have the 180 degree radiancy, but it puts out a lot more BTU than the Buddy Flex. If I remember correctly, the Big Buddy puts out, I believe, 18,000 BTU. And the Big Buddy is the one that takes two one-pound canisters and can also hook up to a 20-pound cylinder. So for the same amount, around, around the same amount, you can get a Big Buddy for about the same price that you can get the Buddy Flex. For about the same amount, you're getting an additional 8,000 or so BTU of heat out of the unit. That's the first thing that I don't like about this unit. I do like that it has the 180 degree radiant, but I don't like that you're getting such a small BTU capacity for the price you're paying when you can buy something else that comes from the same manufacturer that performs better as far as putting out heat. And that's what these machines are meant to do, is to put out heat. I like that it has a compact size with a nice handle on it, and it doesn't weigh that much. Do I recommend it for people to get? It depends on what you need it for. If you're an outdoors person and, you know, the big buddy is too big for you and you're looking for something that's a little bit smaller, that radiates heat throughout a larger um, angle, then sure, go for it. But me personally, I would not purchase this again. So the cooker, first off, the price is too much. I don't think it's very efficient. It took about five minutes or so to bring a cup and a half of water up to a boil. So that five minutes may not sound like a lot, but when you're only dealing with one pound canisters, that tells me that it's going to take one pound of propane for you to be able to heat that amount of water maybe 20 times and you'll be out of fuel, which isn't really that much. I believe that a butane stove for emergency cooking would serve me better than this. If I had to do it over again, I would not purchase this again because I don't think it's very efficient. It's only made to use outdoors. If you're going to be outdoors, you could probably carry something to heat your water or cook your foods that's a little bit smaller than this. And if you're only going to need something to cook outdoors with, Without the Buddy Flex, you cannot operate this machine. So you would have to take your Buddy Flex with you as well. So if it's the middle of summertime and you want to bring something with you to cook outdoors, you're going to have to take the Buddy Flex with you as well as this in order to be able to use this. So that's another reason why I would not purchase this again had I you know, known better. But I'm doing this because I want to show you guys what this is, how it worked. Overall, the entire system worked well. It worked as advertised. I just don't think that the money that you're paying for it is worth what the system allows you to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you how this goes together real quick, just for those of you that are curious, and then we'll call it good. So as you can see here, there's a little gate or a little rack that you can lift up and down right there. So the purpose for that is, is so that you can take your Buddy Flex and put it like this right on top of it you kind of like have to put it backwards so the back of your buddy flex is towards the front of the cooker then you go ahead and take this and as you can see right here there's a couple of little rats or wires that you can hook these onto you lift this up 
As you lift it up, you press this lever up until it engages with that little rag there, and you pull down on it. It holds it on there. And you have to do that on both sides. So you'll see here the same thing. You lift this up. And now it's locked into one unit. See that? So that's pretty cool. But like I said, ladies and gentlemen, if it's summertime and you're wanting an outside cooking appliance, you would have to take this entire thing with you just to use this. I won't be listing this in my Amazon storefront because I only list things in my Amazon storefront that I really, really like and I think are of good quality and value as well. Having said that, I hope you got something out of this. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.